Hi, book fans. So, the Grand Railway Bazaar. That's the reason you've clicked on this link. Cool. Um, what did I think about it? Well, I would say don't read it. <laughs> I think because it's it was written in 1973 uh, and published in 1975. And this uh, really dates it. Our world has uh, modernised. We've now got more interesting values. The world is more international. We're more respectful of different cultures, different people, different countries, uh, different traditions around the world. And um, actually now this author, Paul Thoreau, seems incredibly naive, uh, incredibly uh, just uneducated about those things. Um, and uh, that's a really that's a really big shame. Uh, it's really well written. The book. Uh, it's there's some sentences which are really beautifully uh, crafted. Uh, the vocabulary is nice. I can see why it was a bestseller in the day, uh, but to me, reading it now in 2021, uh, just uh, I it's it's more of a perspective on how the attitude uh, the attitude of the writer was or the attitude of the general public because obviously it was a bestseller back in the day which means that people bought it and liked it and related with it uh, uh, on, on you know on a level uh, they had a rapport with the book so to speak and it's fascinating to see because the mentality of the author was uh, arrogant, naive and stubborn. And just for a few examples of that, what I really uh, want to put in, for example, um, the way that he described the Indian people, the, uh, there's a scene where he's walking through a street and there's a lot of people uh, with like stumps, cut off arms, uh, in, uh, injuries, wounds. Um, and he's like disgusted by all of this. Uh, and he's like looking around like, oh, and there was this man with a stump. And at one point, um, there's a man on one leg, uh, with one leg, and he describes how the man on one leg hops along like this. And he ends a chapter with that, like, I can't get the image of this man hopping the one leg out of my mind. And um, he doesn't come at that from a perspective, from an empathetic, empathetic, empathetic perspective. He comes at that from very, like, critical, shock, humorous um, perspective. So I feel like that is uh, disrespectful to... Um, the actual situation that was happening uh, in that country with people who you know, had 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 injuries and their arms cut off, or because of a war, or, or uh, because of certain events, and God, a guy with no leg who was um, hopping, um, and so I feel that the way that he, as a writer, approached that subject was with an enormous lack of tact. It was from a very uh, arrogant, old-fashioned, um, uncultured perspective. Another example is when a Buddhist monk approaches him. Anyone who watches my channel will understand that I follow Buddhist philosophy. And when the Buddhist monk approached the author, in the book he writes him as like a, a, some bald man. I can't, I don't have the exact wording actually. I should have made a note, but I don't have the actual wording here. But it's disrespectful. It's something like bald man in orange robes uh, approached me begging. Um, and... The author Paul Thoreau uh, just doesn't give him money. Actually, 
walks on in the book and in the thought processes criticizes the monk uh, and says something along the lines of isn't it convenient that um, he's uh, asking people to give for him for the sake of kindness and God uh, probably he made a lot of money I'm massively paraphrasing but that's the general picture that I got from the book and so just felt that was very naive it showed a lack of understanding about the Buddhist philosophy and the people and it showed the arrogance and the stubbornness of him as an American not being kind and compassionate to that monk who had actually approached him he just got rid of him accused him of being uh, just a a waste of space um, a beggar dirty beggar and walked on so that's another example of why I didn't like the author and thought the perspective was very old fashioned and uh, just cruel and then finally at the end of the book we have this part where there is the Trans-Siberian Express and I live in Russia. I've lived in Russia for six years. So I was eager to get to this point in the book about the Trans-Siberian Express. And the way that he describes the, 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 the people there, and there is this main part is he actually says, oh, I'm going to have a Russian lesson. I'm going to attempt to learn the Russian. And he starts writing in the book in Latin the phrases and they're wrong uh, and the way that he says them makes me cringe and the fact that he writes them in Latin characters uh, even in the wrong Latin characters just makes me feel that he has no respect uh, and it just makes me cringe because he gets it totally wrong um, Maybe fair enough he tried to learn the Russian. But then he goes on to describe scenes of Russia like that. Uh, oh, there were people in big coats and clumpy thick fur boots. Uh, and to me it just shows a total naivety and lack of understanding towards their culture. As if he was just uh, seeing it through a filter of his own... Um, stubborn American viewpoint and um, almost distancing himself from it and not actually getting involved and trying to understand why they're wearing this or uh, what their traditions are and why they do certain things but just very sitting back and going oh can you believe they do that um, and then he comes through that and he goes back home so I felt that the whole way through the, the book, he was sitting on a very arrogant, stubborn perspective on his high horse and observing all of these things that happened while he was going through Asia and also Russia and Japan um, and making a running commentary of it from this very critical, naive and arrogant viewpoint. And that's why I would say we have to leave this book in the past because it's just old fashioned and as a world and an international world and we are expanding and finding out about other cultures and other people we can actually be more compassionate and try to develop a better understanding of others um, and not be critical to their traditions and their uh, routines and their cultures. Uh, we can be understanding of it and learn about ourselves and other people uh, and learn to live in a harmonious world. 
So yeah, we need to leave that book in the past and we need to evolve our thinking and learn to understand each other more. And that book is not going to help us do that. So I just wouldn't recommend it. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in another video. Goodbye.